tonight on Vimba. The clever who think they have found an easy target to hijack, but a quick thinking counselor shows them Horish is not one to be played with. It's August 2021, and Annette Depi and her family arrive in a Lone Hill complex to drop off her son. But danger is lurking behind her, and she's not aware of what is coming next. My name's Annette Depi. Uh, I've lived in, in Johannesburg my whole life. I grew up in the south of Johannesburg. I went to Yale High School and I married somebody from Mondial. And then I moved to the north uh, when I started working. And we've been here ever since. And I'm 60 this year. I'm a counselor for the city of Joburg. My job's very uh, demanding. It's very stressful. And without having a family at home that support me, um, I don't think I would have been able to do it for so long. So my name is Paul Depper. Annette and I have been married for close on 35 years. We both work hard, Annette and I. We I work long hours. She's also away often in the evenings. So time that we can spend together, either late at night or on the weekends, we've, we really treasure and enjoy. Crime is a concern uh, because over the years I've been in Midrand, crime has increased dramatically. I've had my cell phone snatched from me at least three times, once on a street corner, and the guy came to my window, took my phone and asked for my laptop. We had people try and get into the house while we were here, but we were able to ward them off and before they even got into the front door, you know, they they'd disappeared. And I, I sometimes think that I, I've been lucky enough not to go through as much as what other people have gone through. But then this happened to me and I never thought it would ever happen to me. So it was Annette's birthday early the next week and we decided to take her out for dinner. It was my brother, my son, myself and obviously Annette. We went to a nice steakhouse in Rosebank and we had a lovely time. We had nice wine, it was a lovely evening. We were joking, we were, it was jovial. It was really a, a lovely evening. When it comes to birthdays with family members, you know, we always like to celebrate as a whole. Um, it's always nice to be around the family when it's something special that you're celebrating in their lives. They had wine at the restaurant, obviously, and I only had one glass. And we left there around about half past nine or just before that, and Annette drove us home because I just wanted to make sure I hadn't drank too much. And she was a designated driver for the evening, even though it was her birthday celebration. We knew we had to drop my son off at his friend's house. He was going away for the weekend with his friend. When we were driving, you know, towards uh, my friend's house or the apartment in Lone Hill, there was, we went through a roadblock, which I haven't been through before in a while. That was about, I don't know, a kilometre away from the house. And I didn't expect anything, you know. And then we went to the complex. As I drove into the complex, I opened my window. We spoke to the guard, the guard on duty. My friend was upstairs with his girlfriend at the time and uh, he didn't answer his phone the first time so during that second call um, obviously my friend realized that we're at the gate outside. Because we were all happy you know it was my birthday I was listening to the conversation in the car so I never checked to see if anyone followed me there. But you didn't expect it to to come it was sort of out of the blue it's not a very deep parking it's right on the road there's not much behind you you know, so you don't, you expect to see everything that's, that's coming behind you, you know. It was not even on my mind that night. That's when it happened. So when we stopped at the complex, there was no cars in sight. I didn't see a car anywhere. 
And as I opened my window, the guard was in the guard hut. Um, he couldn't hear me. And at that moment, the guy put his hand in my window and he, he shone the gun in my face. And I lifted my arms up like this. When, when I saw this chap come to the driver's side, uh, pointing a gun at my wife, and on the left-hand side by me, this chap be bashing on the window, I remember clearly him pointing the gun through the, through the window at me. I even turned and did this. He had his gun in my face. He could have shot me, could have shot my husband. When we come back, the Honourable Councillor Depi must think quick and get herself out of this situation. If we didn't get out of that situation, then, then, we might have got shot. But thinking quickly would be hard for anyone when you have a gun to your face. Annette Depi is a mother, grandmother and ward counsellor. The evening of her birthday in 2021, she arrives to drop off her son at his friend's complex. I drove straight into the complex visitors' parking, waited for the guard to open the gate. We got to the, the townhouse complex, drove to the gate, normal, opened the window to talk to the guard and asked him to open the gate for us. People in South Africa move to the complex because they feel there's a sense of safety behind these gated communities. But more and more, complexes are targets of crimes like hijacking. Anton Kuhn is the owner of No Jack First Response. He deals specifically with hijackings and has an impressive record of vehicle recovery. In other words, King Gagara Yakein. No Jack is a vehicle tracking company. We're there to serve the community. Hijackers have hotspots, yes. A visitor's entrance is much more risky, yes, because now you need to wait for the guard to either sign you in or phone through to somebody and say to them, I'm announcing a visitor for you. The criminals know this. And on this night, these criminals knew they had found themselves an apparently easy target. The guard, he came out of nowhere, put his hand in my window. I also heard my husband say, they're bashing on my window on his side. There were two guys. And he just started smashing the window with the butt of his gun, trying to get the window open, smash it so that he could get into the car. He shouted us to open the door, open the door. Generally, they come in a group, mainly because they don't know what they're going to encounter. The, the purpose for banging on the windows are intimidation. They first of all want to get you worked up. You, you, they need you to get a fright, a big fright. They take the, the butt of the gun, and they bang it, all with the barrel of the gun. So when you look, and you look into the barrel of a gun, you know, generally people just open the door. When he put the gun in my face, and he said to me, switch the car off. And I said, I will, just hold on. I actually literally said, just hold on. At that moment, I just, I just froze, I froze, I actually like, went into panic stage. My opinion with regards to what I've seen on the video, I don't think it was a hijacking. The intention was a robbery. There's a difference. Not every guy that's gonna point you with a gun wants to take your car. The Land Rover Discovery is not a car that they want, unless they're gonna use it for a cash in transit robbery somewhere. So a lot of those robbers would not take the vehicle. They would bend into the vehicle, rip it off you, take your rings off, take your Rolex from you, take your bag, and then they would leave. I didn't know my brother-in-law behind me put his hand through his window, grabbed the guy's shirt, and as he grabbed it, the guy turned around and ran back to his car. My son told my brother-in-law to close his window. He said, lock your doors, don't get out. I do remember stopping my uncle. He wanted to open his door, and I said to him, don't open your door, just leave it closed and I pulled his arm away from the door handle because that could change the situation drastically. If they were able to get in 
um, to the car, I think it would have been a, a very different situation. Everybody's unpredictable in life. You can never tell what a person's going to do. They've got guns. They might be drugged up. They might be wanting to kill somebody. I also don't think they knew that my brother and my son were in the car behind, uh, in the seats rather behind us. And that also made them sort of a little bit nervous because they suddenly went back to their car. At that moment where uh, they got scared, my friend's balcony overlooks the, the guardhouse and he came outside because he heard something was happening and he was tapping his balcony rail with the ring on his finger and I think it was making a very loud noise and they were like whoa let's back off we don't know where that's coming from or what it is and I think that's what initially set them back to sort of rethink what they're doing and they all went back to their car. I remember clearly saying to Annette there's no way we open the door put the car in reverse and go Let's just get out of here. I put my foot on the accelerator and I pushed the car out as far as I could. But for some reason, in my panic state, I lifted my foot off the accelerator, put it on the brake. The main drive, I think, at that time was to talk a neck through it, to put the car in reverse and to go. And don't worry about my car. I had a tow bar as well, which I think helped prevent a lot more damage to my car, which was damaged. And as I stopped, the guy came back and he hit me on the head uh, with his gun. I just remember saying, ouch, that's sore. I got more anger when he hit me on the head. It was more like, listen, I'm going to show you. No, you can't just hit me on the head because you're not going to get away with this. At that moment, I. I got the guts to put my foot down on that accelerator and push that car out. First reaction I had was for us to get out of there and get out of there alive if we can. And my husband said, put your foot full on the accelerator. And it was in reverse. I put my foot down and I pushed them out as far as I could. In, the, in that direction where they came from so that I could go straight towards Wittkuppen. I heard the shots go off behind the car. I didn't know where they were shooting. I was like shaking like a leaf. Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm scared for Annette and her family. When we come back, she tells us exactly what happened next. There were three bullets one spent cartridge, so that was the shot that was fired. That tells me there was intent to hurt me. <laughs> Annette Deppi, a Joburg counselor and her family, escaped a hijacking situation in Lone Hill. Guns pointed at them from all directions. The responsible designated driver had to think quick to get her family away from danger. But now, shots were being fired. I heard one or two shots go off, but it, it wasn't close to me, so I realized it wasn't at us in the car. When I pushed them back, I went forward. I didn't even look if they were following me. I just put on the accelerator. I was shaking at that stage. She was panicking at that point in time, you know, because she's driving, she's having to deal with a lot more um, in that moment. And I just said, go to, the, go to the roadblock, go to the roadblock, go to the roadblock. So the minute we were able to pull away and saw the road in front of us open and we could accelerate and drive away as fast as we could, I think at that moment I realised, you know, we were in a very strong position. If you see on the video, they came out and they drove behind us, but they went out a different direction. Before the, the hijacking incident took place, we'd come through a roadblock. So we raced off in that direction. We didn't even go to the nearest police station, we went straight to the roadblock, because it was the closest place. We knew there were police there. We, my dad and my uncle and I got out the car straight away. We told the, I think it was Metro Police, and I don't know if there were saps there at the time, um, but we told them, follow us, we've just been attempted hijacking, you know, down the road. I think like two cars just loaded with them, followed us back straight away. Uh, they were very helpful, the guys from JMPD. 
they asked my son to come with them in the car so that they could go see if they could find the car. But when we got back to the scene, there were three bullets. One spent cartridge, so that was the shot that was fired, and two uh, bullets that had been ejected, obviously through blockages or something like that, where they tried to fire. The one that did jam was like aimed straight at my mom. You know, praise the Lord that uh, it jammed uh, in that moment. So I think we were very lucky that night to, to get away. It took the police nearly an hour to get there. Oh, we then had to do statements and uh, that took a while. And after that, around half past 11, I think we went to the hospital to go and have my head checked. The doctor said, you know, looked at my eyes and he said, you haven't got concussion, so it's okay, you can go home. And I came home, I was exhausted. We'd been sitting on the street since, um, for four, four, five hours. First thing I did when I got home is I had a cup of coffee and I got into my pajamas and I went to bed. I was exhausted. Hey, and what a relief that Uma made it through this horrible nightmare. My relationship with my mom is very good. Uh, you know, she's the bee's knees in my perspective. Um, she's been there my whole life. She's given me support, gratitude, you know, love unconditionally. And uh, it's a very good relationship that we have. And I'm, I'm blessed that nothing happened to her seriously that evening. I think for weeks afterwards, people were phoning, still telling me they saw the videos, um, and they're sorry that we went through traumatic uh, time in our lives. I definitely think that the video being on social media is very helpful to the community. I mean, it's good that it's that stuff like this is is spoken about. That community knows about it. You know, if no one ever talks about it, then no one ever thinks there's ever muggings or there's ever, you know, crimes being committed and we don't want to give people a false sense of security. Many people have asked me if I've gone for trauma counselling and I, s I haven't, I must be honest. I just felt that if I spoke about it uh, and I got it out of my system, uh, it, would have hel it would help, and it did. Also the next day, I think we spent the whole day talking amongst ourselves as a family, especially my, my brother, my son, my wife. Um, I was adamant we had to catch these guys. But afterwards, uh, the police said to me that they couldn't get the registration number on the camera. And that's when I realized that they're not gonna catch these guys. So that's a strong person. She's, I think, warm and friendly, um, compassionate. And I think she's got a strong head on her shoulders. And I think in moments of emergency, panic, like this, I think she kept her cool and and we were able to do the right thing at the right time. Annette should get a award for somebody that didn't take nonsense. She said, I wasn't going to be a victim, I'm not going to be a victim, and uh, she did the right thing to get herself and her family out of that. I think she's definitely a hero in my mind. I mean, under the circumstances there, you know, being flustered that your adrenaline's going, or there's four people in the car and there's three people outside the car with guns. It's almost an overload of information to handle and process it in the way she did, um, to, you know, manage to get the car in reverse and back out the driveway and then carry on going. Yeah, I think it is fantastic. You know, I think she's, she's very brave. I'm just thankful that I have my family with me that night. And uh, I was able to save us all by getting that car out as quick as I did. I won hands down, 10 out of 10. <laughs> if I look back at the video, it looks like it comes out of a movie. <laughs> and we're happy that this committed counselor got out of this one. I love a happy ending, especially one where the criminals are outsmarted and end up with nothing, as is the Vimba way. Now, if you live in a complex, you might think you're safe from crime. But these guys have their tricks of the trade. And Umalume Anton is on to them. Gated communities may be higher risk for hijackings and crime-related incidents. And the reason is, depending on where they're situated, if it's in, a, in an area where people don't have Rolexes and don't drive Porsches and um, BMWs and Mercedes-Benzes necessarily, it's going to be much lower. My tips will be as follow. Please be vigilant. Always look around you. Don't just drive straight up to your gate. 
and drive into your gate. Look into your mirrors, check behind you, if there's somebody following you. A lot of them won't just be on your tail. They will definitely keep a, a safer following distance so that it doesn't look too suspicious. So check if there's anybody following you. If you realize that you're being followed or you suspect that you're being followed, don't just drive straight home again. Just maybe communicate with your service provider, a security service provider. If you have a security service provider in your area, phone the South African Police Services 10111 um, or take a turn or two through other corners, other turns and see if the same vehicle is still following you. And then you will know. And if it is following you, then suggestion is find a safe space. Or if you have a uh, police station or any security service provider that's close to you, rather make your way there. If you're at a gated community and you have to go in, again, just check behind you. Don't just stop right in front of the gate. Stop in such a manner that you know that you are able to get yourself out of that situation. It's not always possible, and um, but it's safer to stop a little bit back, even if the security guard has to approach you. And make sure that your vehicle doors are locked. Your windows are all up. If you need to press a button, you need to do that, check behind you. Check in your mirror, is anybody pulling in behind you? If somebody pulls in behind you, it's better just roll your window up for a second or two. Check what the situation is. But if you are a victim, if something like that happens to you, at the end of the day, your life is, is much more important than your vehicle. Thank you, Malume Anton. So now you know what to look out for. We're at the end of another roller coaster that is an episode of Vimba. Just like with Annette, these chances thought they found an easy target outside a complex, but they didn't count on windows that wouldn't give in. Showing her a closed window can go a long way. Okay, while those three find a smashable window, or hopefully a prison cell, stay safe, South Africa.